Good morning, Sava here from Sava Talks Football for another daily dose of Spurs. Not sure anyone really wants a daily dose of Spurs today. A lovely fresh morning, not to be said for last night. Nothing lovely or fresh about last night. Look, I don't want to sit here and do the blame game. I think there's far too much of that flying around our fan base at the moment. I think there's a lot of blame that goes around. I think everyone deserves a little piece of the pie. Let's be really, really honest. The owners haven't covered themselves in glory for 22 years unless it's about business. Um, let's be fair, I think the managers, managers, Stellini and Conte last night, got it absolutely terribly wrong. The players, where was the fight? Where was the passion? Where was the, where was the desire to win an FA Cup game that we should be winning? Where was the, where was the battling qualities in the second half when we needed them? Just, it, it just, we turned into a bit of a wallflower. Um, the scouting, Paratici. For me, I just think the whole thing is a mess. Now, I say this when we win and lose. So before people say, oh, you weren't saying this after Chelsea and West Ham. Well, anyone that knows me knows that I absolutely was. And this is the thing. This is why when we get all a little bit too excited when we beat bad teams like West Ham and Chelsea, this is the problem. We go well over the top. We want to tell everyone else they're in the mud. We want to tell everyone that the manager's the best thing since sliced bread and that everything's going well and this is a winning manager. Then you lose a game like that and people wonder why I don't get too excited when we win or when we lose. At the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, we are a club that are typically, typically Spursy. The Spursy tag will not go away, will it? People think it's derogatory. People have told me off for years for using the word Spursy. But we are Spursy. This is what we do. This is what we do. Now, look, if we look at last night, should they have rotated a few players in and out? I mean, look, it's, first of all, it was Sheffield United. Now, I'm not knocking Sheffield United. But this wasn't even Sheffield United's first team, which are second in the league. This was Sheffield United's B team. This was a young team comprised together because of eight first team injuries and because of an illness spreading around the Sheffield United training ground. Let that sink in. Before, I keep seeing this narrative already. All I keep seeing is, oh, we played a B team. No, we didn't. Kane, yeah, and Romero. Kulu you can chuck in there as well, but Kulu's not been good for ages anyway. Other than that, this was our first 11. We've got to stop doing this whole, we make sweeping generalisations like, oh, our B team. It wasn't a B team. We made a few changes. And the players we brought in were Perisic, who everyone's telling me has been great this season because of all his assists, and who is a first team regular for us. The other player we brought in was Papa Sarr, who everyone's telling me is a generational player and, and, and is, is better than Oli Skip. Yeah? Sanchez should never be in a Spurs shirt, of course. That one's got to be on the manager. And then Lucas Moura came in, who, funnily enough, was probably our best player on the night. So at the end of the day, I think we've got to be really careful when we talk about B team, when we talk about players, uh, when we talk about players that are, um, are not good enough for our first 11. Well, first of all, the manager picked those players, whether that was Stellini or Conte. Second of all, there was more than enough to beat Sheffield United. And if anyone suggests otherwise, then that becomes an agenda. You've got Brazil's number nine up front against Sheffield United. You've got South Korean's player of the year for however many years, and people tell me he's world class. Cool, all right. So you've got those two immediately. You've got Hoiberg, everyone's Viking, the captain, uh, this, that, the other. Papa Sar's generational. Poro's our 45 million new signing. Dyer and Davis, both in the teams that beat West Ham and Chelsea. Yeah? Perisic, who's got all of our most of our assists this season. So where were we not strong enough to beat Sheffield United? Where, I don't understand this. This narrative of a B team isn't quite right. Changes, yes. A whole B team? No. I think that's just being silly. At the end of the day, what I do know is this. If not playing Harry Kane, and let's be honest, that's what this is, because Sheffield United didn't really hurt us at the back yesterday. We're, pin we're pinning all this on not playing Harry Kane. If Tottenham Hotspur are a football club that cannot beat Sheffield United's B team without Harry Kane, 
then all of this talk of top four and Conte signing and, and signing top players can all get in the bin. It doesn't mean anything. It just shows how far off it we are. As I said, this isn't about blaming one person. These sort of results, they come, they go. This is what we do now, unfortunately. There's a lot of blame, as I said, to go around. A lot of blame. And I don't think any of us can, can, uh, can hide from that. The managers have to take it on the chin. The owners have to take it on the chin. The players have to. Paratici, for me, who I think has done an awful job at this football club. Sorry if anyone likes Paratici. I think he's done an absolute dreadful job. 17 players have come in and look at the state of our squad. Um, again, that then filters into Daniel Levy and Enoch. And, and look, it's just the whole thing is a bit of a mess. So look, as I say, for those of you that watch me regularly, you'll hear me say all the time, consistency. Consistency, then I'll get excited. Everyone tells me off, you don't celebrate enough because I've been here and seen it all before. I'm too old and ugly. I know this guy, I'm too old and ugly to see us win games and get excited because I know what's around the corner. We did it last year, beat Man City in the league, then I went away to Burnley and lost 1-0. We've done it this year. You know, we win a couple of games and then we go to Leicester City and lose. We go to, we, we go to Milan and lose. We beat Chelsea and West Ham and everyone loses their minds. Then we go to Sheffield United and lose. And I'm sure we'll beat Wolves and then we'll go to someone else and lose. So for me, consistency is the key. So many issues at this football club in the long term. Fourth place at the moment in the league, great. But I'll leave you with this. If Harry Kane wasn't at this football club, where would we be? Where would we be? Because we couldn't even beat a Sheffield United team who had a 37-year-old striker and had two 20-year-olds in, in midfield, and uh, sorry, two 20-year-olds in midfield and a 19-year-old in attacking midfield. They've got three teenagers. Well, they've got a teenager, two 20-year-olds, and a 37-year-old in their team, and our and, and our, our players couldn't beat them. FA Cup's gone for another year. We'll try and win it again next year, I guess, or maybe we won't try and win it again next year. As I said, this isn't about one person. I'm not here knocking Conte, Cellini, the owners. I'm, the collective football club needs to take a real big look at itself and work out what they want and what is going on. I'll leave that with you. Have a wonderful day. Um, look, we move on to Wolves. Let's hope we can get the three points there. But when we beat Wolves, if we beat Wolves, let's not lose our minds let's celebrate of course but let's not lose our minds let's remember games like this and remember that we are so up and down consistency is my word i keep saying it let's get consistency before we belittle everyone else and before we lose our minds and tell each other that we're all wrong and right just opinions it's football right it's just opinions one thing i do know is let's not blame the fans for what happened the fans didn't pick the team the manager did Anyway, have a lovely day. I'll see you all soon. And please join me tomorrow for the 24-hour live charity stream. Friday, 12 p.m. through Saturday, 12 p.m. Every penny of YouTube revenue, Super Chats, and we'll put the link for the Just Giving page. Every penny of it goes to the Syria and Turkey earthquake appeal. Please, please, please like, please subscribe, and please donate anything you can. Much love, and we'll see you tomorrow for a daily dose of Spurs. Take care.